Hello and welcome to the Rev It Up Podcast, helping entrepreneurs fill up their tanks, crank up the RPMs, and put the pedal to the metal until they cross that finish line. Hello, I'm Jess Tiffany. Ready, set, go. Hey everybody, thank you so much and excited to have you here on the Rev It Up Podcast. Uh, here we're going to speak with the awesome Bob Bird today. Bob is a sought-after sought speaker at company leadership and sales conferences, sharing the platform with everyone from today's business leaders and broadcast personalities to even a former U.S. president. Bob is the author of a number of books on sales, marketing, and influence with a total book sales of well over a million copies. His book, The Go-Giver, co-authored with John David Mann, itself has sold over 975,000 copies, and it has been translated into 29 languages. Uh, his, his and John's newest parable in the Go-Giver series is the Go-Giver Influencer. Bob is an advocate, supporter, and defender of the free enterprise system, believing that the, that the amount of money one makes is directly proportional to how many people they serve. He is also an unapologetic animal fanatic and is a past member of the board of directors of Furry Friends Adoption Clinic and Ranch in his hometown of Jupiter, Florida. Welcome to the show, Bob. Thanks, Jess. Thanks for having me. Yeah, very, very happy to have you here. And so uh, before we get started, tell us about the, the, fur, the fur babies, the furry friends. Oh, uh, well, that's just, it's a local um, uh, animal rescue and, and uh, clinic and ranch and so forth. And they do a fantastic job. I, I was on the board of directors. I rotated off and uh, still support. Hold on one second. Sorry. I just had to rescue a little uh, cat right here from just about falling off the, oh, off the chair. Uh, got a couple of foster kitties right now that we're finding a home for. Oh, and so uh, this one almost, almost just, just took a dive off the uh, chair. So sorry about that, uh, but uh, yeah. So it's a, a great organization. The, the 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 employees and the volunteers there just do a, a an absolutely fantastic job. Awesome. And where, um, and Bob, where's a great place for people to find you uh, online if they want to reach out and, and discover your stuff? Uh, best place is just the the main website, which is burg b u r g dot com. Perfect. So b u r g dot com. Perfect. All right. Awesome. And, um, and obviously you've written, you know, uh, some amazing books and had great success. Um, could, could you tell us um, from one of your books, it's the five laws of stratospheric success? Yeah, well, that's from The Go-Giver, which is a business parable that I co-authored with John David Mann. And uh, John is really the writer. I mean, he's a fantastic storyteller. I'm much more of a how-to person. All my books before and after The Go-Giver series have been how-to books. So John is really the master writer. Um, and it's a, it's a, a you know, it's a, a business story, but it's really applicable to, uh, to life. It's about a young man by the name of Joe. He's a young, ambitious, aggressive, up-and-coming young sales professional who uh, works very hard, but is very frustrated because he's not getting the results he thinks he deserves. Mm -hmm. And really what he comes to understand is that it's because his focus was on himself, not on those he was supposed to be serving. So the, the uh, premise, if you will, of, of the go-giver is that shifting your focus, which is so key, shifting your focus from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others, understanding that doing so is not only a, a more pleasant way of conducting business, it's actually the most financially profitable way as well. And um, when you were out there serving, is there a couple of examples you have of, of, uh, of ways that people can add value uh, to others? Yeah, well, I mean, we can add value in in any way that another person feels benefits them. So in other words, value is defined as the relative worth or desirability of a thing, of something to the end user or beholder. So in other words, what is it about this thing, this product, service, concept, idea, or it might be information or connections or what have you, that another person finds to be so valuable that they either you know want to buy from you if it's a matter of the product or service, or just connect with you, get to know you better if it's a matter of just non-business type value that you're providing. Awesome. And do you have like a method to figure out, um, you know, what value would be to people? I mean, do you just go ask them, say, what, what would be valuable to you? Or how, how do you figure that out? 
Yeah, you know, that's a great question because most times it's simply not appropriate necessarily to just say, hey, what do you find to be a value and what can I, you know, you don't even have the relationship yet. But when talking with another human being, we can ask questions that typically will elicit the, you know, those those answers. We can also remember now with social media and with the internet in itself, we can research people, we can find out about them. We may understand some of their business challenges just because it's a niche market market we happen to work, or we might find that this person uh, does business a certain way. We might find that they would like to meet certain people who can help them in this regard. So there's many ways of being able to find out what another person may or may not find to be of value. But really, the best way of all is when we're talking to another human being is to just ask questions and then listen. Yeah, well, that's, that's fantastic. Um, and do you, do you normally, um, you know, just... Um, reach out through, you know, um, social media nowadays, or do you kind of just pick up the phone and call people or how do you kind of get that initial conversation started? It, you know, it really depends on what the person does. There are some businesses where, you know, you've got to make outbound contact through the telephone. I mean, that's just the, the best way that you are going to do it. Or it might be by, by meeting people locally somewhere. You know, when COVID isn't involved, we can actually be at, at local meetings. It might be, you know, charity events, Chamber of Commerce. It might be the kids' ball game. It might be going to certain business events. It might be uh, exhibitions and, and um, you know, different. So it, it just, it really just depends on what that person does. The neat thing is in many businesses, yes, we can do it through social media and we can do it. You know, we can do it through LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and connect with someone and be able to begin that relationship. And yes, relationships, deep relationships can be built on social media. What we need to remember is that the social media platform is simply a platform. It's a means to an end. Uh, you know, I often say in my, my, um, I guess, major statement over the last 30 years since I've been doing this is that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. It's not with those computers they know, like, and trust. But that person behind the computer sitting at the keyboard, uh, you can create great relationships. But, but what you need to simply ask yourself is, is what I'm about to say, write, pin, tweet, post, you know, whatever, um, is this going to most likely add value to okay. that person's life? And if so, click send. Hey everybody, Jess here. What if I could help your company find over $100,000 in hidden revenue streams in less than an hour without spending an extra dime on advertising or marketing? Reach out to me at cardzap.thebumpcard.me. Check out the video on five steps to profit and also reach out and we can have a conversation. Thank you. Thanks. Right on. Yeah, I like that about, uh, you know, sharing value. Now, is there like a methodology um, that you've kind of discovered to kind of draw out those relationships and try to, to try to create those bridges? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, once you begin to connect with someone, now you continue with the follow up and the follow through. So it can be as, you know, as, as simple, I don't want to say a score is complicated because we don't want to make it complicated, but you know, it can be anything from, from uh, bringing information to that person that they might find to be of value. It might be connecting them with someone who would be a valuable connection for them. Uh, it could be sending a personalized handwritten thank you note, you know, when it's someone who you definitely want to have as a, as a connection. And these are, you know, handwritten thank you notes were always valuable uh, and always distinguished you from everyone else. But in today's day of texts and emails and so forth, now even more so, especially when you've made a connection with someone on LinkedIn and then you send a, a handwritten thank you note, wow, what a difference it makes. So, and, and there's also ways of, uh, you know, you can have a group, a, a, a group on Facebook or a group on LinkedIn that you can invite someone to. Or depending upon what you do, you can invite people to a, a um, free question and answer from an expert in their field or something that, it, that you bring on as a guest and you become the conduit to great information that would benefit them. So there's lots and lots of ways to, to bring value to other human beings. Yeah. I love it. I, I just reached behind me and grabbed my, I got my stack of thank you cards. Just hey, all right. Right next Excellent. to me. Uh-huh. Uh, 
I, uh, I think I learned that back when I used to sell cars 20 some years ago or something, you know, kind of writing this thing. And I'm not as sure. good about it as I should be. Um, I, I'll be honest. I don't send out very many, but uh, um, like I used to, but, um, but that is a powerful thing. I think, like you said, reaching out with that thank you card because nobody's doing it anymore. Immense. Yeah, uh, exactly. Immensely powerful. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. And I, I was, I was just admiring what you're saying there. Cause you know, um, I, I'm kind of a LinkedIn guru, I guess if you want to call it, some people say, but, uh, but basically building that relationship is huge. You know, you know, you send an invite and then you, you know, you go in and you endorse something, and you, you send them an article that's relative to their industry or you, mm-hmm. or you're, you know, like you said, or the handwritten uh, card or you pick up the phone, you know, whatever you got to do to kind of just step by step by step and build that relationship. And I think uh, that's, that, that totally makes sense what you're saying. I, I totally am on board with that. Um, so tell us about, um, I saw in one of your notes that said going for, going for win-win in relationships. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, that thought process? Well, I mean, I, I think that's a pretty, uh, pretty common, um, uh, you know, part of today's lexicon in business, win-win, right? And it really means that you're, uh, that, that any type of relationship transaction, anything should always benefit all parties involved. If it doesn't, then it's probably not only does it feel yucky, but it's probably not very sustainable. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I remember uh, Harry Brown, one of my, one of a, a person who I just consider to be a, a, a great mentor, the late Harry Brown, uh, he always said in any type of, of sale, for example, there, uh, there should always be two profits, the buyer profits, and the seller profits because each of them come away better off afterwards than they were beforehand. Yeah. I mean, that's win-win, you know, win-win means one plus one equals three. <laughs> Absolutely. Great. So, so the, uh, the guy that sends out the little spam messages, that's not the win-win guy. No, uh, it, it's really not. It's, it's really not an effective way of, of doing business. I mean, there must be some kind of, of payoff for those people who do that because, uh, you know, otherwise you think there would be no more spam, right. but, uh, you know, so somebody has, you know, but, but it's really, I don't think it's a very profitable, sustainable way to, to do business. And it so certainly it's a, it's doesn't a numbers work. gain, right. Um, but in that, in that doing it that way, it's, it's just, if, you get if they're if they're able to even stay in business eventually because of you know they get reported and they're off you know so and and certainly uh, you know you're a, a LinkedIn authority and and you see now more than ever how many people who once they you know they reach out to connect you connect and what do they do they come right back with a yeah. sales you know yeah, that drives me crazy and, and, and you know do you really look at them and say yes this is someone I want to do business with probably probably yeah. not. You know, the funny thing is I, I, I found if I kind of scold them sometimes, they've actually had people come back and, and come back and, and, and pay, pay for training. So it's kind of interesting, but <laughs> I guess those people just didn't, didn't know that it was not appropriate. Uh, some, some, a lot don't No, no. And, you know, sometimes we, there's that, there's that tendency to, 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 to um, assess ill intent or impute ill intent to someone they really may not know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Because my initial feeling is like, oh, these they're they're doing this to be, you know, you know, jerks or whatever. But yeah, yeah. Sometimes you end up talking to them, and it turns out they just, oh, I just figured, you know, you'd want to cut to the chase, or you know, or you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. But um, so tell us about the uh, um, your book, uh, endless referrals, and kind of maybe a couple quick things about how you uh, get referrals and, and go about that. Well, that was really the first book I had out. This was many, many years ago. It was called Endless Referrals, Network Your Everyday Contacts into Sales. And, uh, and the, uh, it was really written, and it's a how-to book, and it was really written for, for the, the entrepreneur or salesperson who had a product or service they really believed in. They knew it brought immense value to others, but they may not have felt comfortable with the process mm. of going out into their communities and, and uh, creating these relationships that would result in people knowing them, liking them, trusting them, and wanting to do business with them and refer others. Uh, really, the endless referral system is about creating those relationships and and building that know like and trust and you know it can really start with the first time you meet someone and you meet them at an event and and, and you understand that that it's going to be much more productive to focus on them than it is to try to focus on you and your product because right now when they first meet you 
they don't care about you or your product. They care about themselves. So rather than trying to make a sale when you're, you know, you first meet someone instead, just create the relationship, establish the relationship. And it can be as simple as asking them questions such as, how did you get started in the so-and-so business? Because you've asked them what they do and they ask you what you do. And, and you ask them, how did you get started in the so-and-so business? And uh, they answer and they feel great about being asked that question. It's not a slick question. It's not a clever question. It's pretty mundane, but yeah. people love answering it because you've just made them feel special. It needs to come from a place of authenticity, but you, you're asking them to tell you their story and nobody asked them to tell you, tell them their story. <laughs> And, but you, you know, how did you get started in the office products profession? Or how did you get started selling copying machines? Or how did you decide to go into uh, uh, the accounting profession? Or how did you, whatever. Uh, so I, I call it the movie of the week question. You're actually asking them to tell their story, right? Uh, a good follow-up question to that might be, what do you enjoy most about it? You know, it, it might probably sound more like, wow, you must have had some interesting experiences over the years. Tell me, what do you enjoy most about your work? Mm. And again, it's just a, I call it a feel good question. It's yeah. just a, it's not intrusive. It's not invasive. It's not salesy. It's not prospecty. It just really helps that person, it makes that person feel good about themselves, about the conversation and about you. Now, after you've established this kind of initial rapport, a really neat question to ask is what I call the one key question that will separate you from the rest. And it sounds something like this, uh, Dave or Mary, how can I know if someone I'm speaking with uh, would be a good prospective client for you? Mm. Okay. How can I know if someone I'm speaking with is a good customer for you or a good prospect for you. When you ask this question again, unlike everyone else who's just handing their business card and talking to them about themselves and giving them their, their elevator speech and the whole thing, you're actually focused right on this person mm -hmm. and on them. But now you've actually asked them a question and have framed it in such a way that their answer is going to help you to help them. Right. And add value to their lives. And now they're seeing you as someone who potentially would be of great value to their lives. So, so let's say Gary sells copying machines and you say, Gary, how can I know if someone I'm speaking with is a, a good potential client for you? And he says, well, if, if you're ever in an office and you notice a copying machine and uh, next to this copying machine is a waste paper basket, which is filled to the rim and overflowing with crumpled up pieces of paper, right? That's a good sign that copying machine has been breaking down a lot lately. And that would be an excellent prospect for me. So he's just told you, he's shown you how to go out and, and help him. Now, a good way, by the way, to, to, to segue into that question or set up that question is to say, you know, Gary, I always love connecting good people with other good people, tell me, how can I know if someone I'm speaking with, right? And then you follow it up. Now, if this person's not in sales per se, so prospects wouldn't necessarily be of value to them. Remember, we always have to think about what's of value to them. Right. It might be just, how can I know if someone I'm speaking with is someone you'd like to meet or would be a good connection or contact for you? Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Uh, yeah. And, and that's going to work. It's a universal principle. It's going to work today as it did you uh -huh. know, years. And it works online as well. Yeah. So, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I find if I, if I introduce two people, I, I do like a three-way, you know, uh, mm -hmm. email or whatever in LinkedIn, pe both sides are just happy, you know, the, the, you sure. know, just both. They, and then you kind of get the spirit of, I think, reciprocity and they, they want to help you. And, you know, it just mm -hmm. becomes win-win, like you said. And, you know, what I like to do when introducing people who don't know each other is I, I tend to first send a quick note to them individually mm -hmm. to ask, would they like to be introduced? Would they be interested in meeting? Or I'll say, you know, this person I think can provide some real value while you can, you know, and so forth. And then getting both of them to, to agree to it. Uh, and often there's one person who'd probably benefit even more than the other. And you want to make sure you get that, you know, uh, and then when I get there, okay, then I'll make that introduction and give sort of an edifying introduction of both of them, letting them know they've both, you know, agreed to receive this introduction and, and, and so forth. Yeah, that's, that's a great point to, to prep them ahead of time and, and kind of, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I, I uh, totally, yeah, I agree. I, I didn't think to mention that, but yes, it is good, good to just kind of mention it to them before so you can kind of build it and then build each other up and edify and uh, yeah. <laughs> 
So um, I know um, I just want to thank you um, for uh, ta ta talking with us today and sharing with, from your years of experience. It's just uh, it's, a, it's an honor to uh, get to uh, to interview you. And um, and I recommend everybody go out and get get his, get the Go Giver, uh, get uh, thank you. get the Endless Referrals book as well, and just um, and and was it it was Berg.com? Yeah, B U R G. Okay, perfect. So, uh, any uh, lasting uh, last comment you'd like to tell people to, out there? Well, you know, I think about uh, some advice I was given years and years ago, almost 40 years ago. Uh, I had been in sales for a couple of years. I, I remember I was in a sales slump at the time, and I was sort of like Joe, right? The protagonist and the go-giver, right? That young, ambitious, aggressive, but my focus wasn't on the right place. And I remember an older guy, much older guy, and of course, it's 40 years ago. So when I say much older guy, probably my age now, but to me back then, he was a much older guy. And so, and uh, he wasn't even in the sales department. I think he was an engineer or something like that. But I think he saw me kind of as Joe, that guy with potential, but who was frustrated and not. And he said to me, uh, you know, Berg, he was a last name kind of guy. He said, Berg, can I give you some advice? And I, I said, yeah, please do. I, I need it. And he said, you know, if you want to make a lot of money in sales, he said, don't have making money as your target. The target is serving others. Mm -hmm. Now, when you hit the target, he said, you'll get a reward and that reward will come in the form of money mm -hmm. and you can do with that money whatever you choose. But never forget, he said, the money is simply the reward for hitting the target. It ain't the target itself. Your target is serving others. And that made a big shift for me. And I think that if we can carry that and we understand that focus must be on the other part, because remember, no one's going to buy from you because you need the money right. or because you have a quota to meet or because you're a nice person. Yeah. They're going to buy from you because they believe that they're, they will benefit by doing so, which is great news. It means that salesperson who can really move their focus off of themselves and onto that other person, that's that person who creates that that environment for the benevolent context for success. Oh, fantastic. Well, let's everybody remember to go out and serve some people today. And, uh, and uh, you know, eventually you'll probably, you'll probably get that reward, but uh, make sure you serve people first. And that's <laughs> the key. So I want to thank you again for being on the show and everybody out there listening, make sure you like subscribe and share. And obviously uh, we like the, the good reviews if you can, can share those with us too, but, uh, thanks again, and um, and thank you, uh, Bob. I really appreciate you being on today. Thank you, Jess. Appreciate you greatly.